basically talking about the type of worms that will be affecting uh, your livestock um, on your property and just a couple of ways to, to look at treating them with drenches and the like. Uh, right, so the first point is what is a parasite? So basically it's any organism which lives in or on its host and basically derives its nutrients or gets benefits at the host's expense. So it will always cause a negative outcome for the host. Um, so the worms that we will cover um, today, uh, we'll start off with the nematodes or the your normal gut worms um, and then we'll have a bit of a talk about lung worms um, and then we'll have a bit of a discussion about a couple of the other types of worms that you'll come across um, in your livestock. Um, so here's just a basic overview of the life cycle of your normal worm. Um, so basically what happens is the adults live in the intestines or the, or the, the guts basically of the animal. Um, they produce eggs which they then pass out in the feces of the animal onto the pasture. Basically what will happen then is that the little larvae and the eggs will develop on the pasture and then when they decide the time is right based on the weather and, and, and other factors, they will travel out from the feces basically and will travel through the surface layer of moisture on the grass and try and get as high as possible so that they get eaten by another animal. And then once the larvae get swallowed by the animal, they will then go through uh, basically a, a development stage within the animal um, to, to develop into an adult. Now that can involve either just developing in the intestine or sometimes they will actually migrate through the liver or through the bloodstream and um, go through the lungs and do all sorts of funny sort of routes through the body. Uh, none of that's really too important um, in terms of for the worms. It's important to know that pasture is a vital step, obviously, in spreading the worms. Um, all right, so the effects of worms. Now, the, the first point, absorbing nutrients from the host's food. Now, this is actually quite a minor effect. Um, even if there's a really heavy worm burden, um, the actual the mass of the worms is actually very, very low proportional to the animal. Um, so they're not going to outcompete with the nutrients for the animal. Um, so that's only of a minor significance. Um, the more important aspect that will cause an effect to the host is the next two points, the fact that they will penetrate into the gut lining and into the cells and destroy them and cause quite a bit of damage. And in the course of doing that, they'll cause quite a lot of inflammation uh, and will basically open the door for any bacteria in the gut to potentially form an infection in the gut. Um, now, those are the more important things that are going to cause um, diarrhea and cause poor growth and possibly death in your animals. Now, the suck blood, blood loss point. Now, that's a specific worm, um, predominantly in sheep and alpacas and the like. Uh, it's commonly known as barber's pole. Uh, its proper name is Homonchus contortus. Um, basically, it is a parasite that will burrow into the wall of the uh, intestine, um, gain access to the blood of the animal, and will actually suck the blood. Now, the problem with barber's pole is that you only need a very small number of them to have a significant effect on the animal, because they'll cause anemia. Uh, and this can be a very serious parasite amongst sheep, goats, and alpacas. Um, so gut blockage point. Um, now that is more of a problem when you get large burdens of parasite in an animal and then they get treated with drench because um, all the worms will die at the same time and it, it, throughout the intestines and guts there are places where it naturally narrows and what happens is those worms can basically build up at those points and cause a blockage. Uh, now this, this is quite a rare thing to happen, but it, it, will, it is, uh, will sometimes happen with uh, animals that haven't been wormed in a long time. Um, and the damaged up tissues, that's predominantly the liver. Uh, you get quite a bit of scarring through the liver due to migration of the, of the worms. Um, so that can cause issues further down the track. Uh, again, this is quite a m rare effect. Um, 
that we don't tend to come across very often. All right, so now some photos of clinical signs because images are always great. Um, now that's first uh, sheep up the top left. Um, so that black dotted line, now that is the normal line of the jaw. Um, so that is how she should look from the side. Um, now as you can see, there's beneath that black dotted line, there's a lot of tissue there. Now basically what this is showing is something called bottle jaw, which is where they accumulate fluid um, predominantly under the jaw and also on their brisket. Um, now this is due to having low levels of protein in their blood, either because their um, because the worms are causing such an impact that they're losing protein in their body and not able to absorb enough because of damage to the intestine, or will also happen if they're highly anemic from barber's pole. Now, these are a couple of very, very daggy sheep. Um, so these sheep have got diarrhea. Now, the most likely cause of this would be worms in these animals. Um, normal fecal matter in a sheep should be very firm and firm little balls. Um, if you've got fecal staining like this, there's, there's definitely something going on. Um, the first step should be giving them a drench. Um, if they don't respond to that, then probably getting a vet out to see them um, to determine if it's uh, an infection or something else happening. Uh, now there's a cow with the same sort of thing going on. Um, now cows tend to have looser feces anyway, but you shouldn't see this sort of staining and see it on the hocks and on the tail. Um, you shouldn't, a normal cow will not have this sort of uh, staining on her back ends and there's another sign that she's more than likely got worms. Uh, now this poor little joker here is straining and doesn't look very comfortable at all. Now quite a few of the parasites, because of the inflammation in the gut, um, it causes them to strain excessively and uh, to need to go basically toilet quite frequently. Um, yeah, and this here is the back line over the ribs of a cow. Now this is a very skinny cow. This would be borderline welfare case. Um, basically they can get into the state very quickly uh, with worms or with any other thing that's affecting their gut um, just because not only are they struggling to absorb the nutrients, but because of their immune response, takes up actually a lot of energy. It's just like if you've got the flu, you feel very run down and you tend to lose weight. Just your body requires a lot of energy to, to fight off an infection. And the last image here, now that is showing the membranes around the eye. As you can see there, they're absolutely white. Now they should be a nice pink colour normally, so this would be an animal that's been affected by barber's pole and is now very anemic. Uh, an animal in this sort of state potentially needs a blood transfusion, um, so that's something to discuss with your vet. Alright, now lungworm. Now, as you can imagine from the name, these worms live in the lungs. Now they, they live in the airways in, your, in the lungs of the animals. Um, so they cause quite a bit of irritation and um, can actually cause pretty significant blockages to the lungs as well. Now it's very common in young animals. We've seen there's been quite a bad year for it this year. Um, basically the main way you notice it is a lot of coughing whenever you pen the animals or sort of move them into a new paddock when they've been running around a bit. Uh, you're also, it also has quite a significant effect on uh, their weight gain, um, just from the fact that because they're struggling to breathe, they tend to eat less because they're busy concentrating on breathing rather than eating, and also as well because of the, the immune response to it. Now the adult worms are in the lungs. Now what they do is they lay the eggs in the lungs and then the animal quite kindly coughs up and swallows those eggs back to the gut. The eggs then hatch in the gut and then pass out in the feces as little larvae. Now they, just like the other gut worms, they develop in the feces and then will move off into the pasture to hopefully be eaten by another animal and uh, restart the whole thing again. All right, now prevention and treatment. Now these are general recommendations. Um, normally these will alter farm to farm depending on their system and other grazing practices and stuff like this. 
Um, but as a general rule, we recommend giving a first drench sort of two to three weeks after they start eating grass. Uh, while they're still on milk and meal, there's no real point because they're not being exposed to any worms. Um, once you've given them their first drench, um, it's very important to drench them regularly. So you want to be giving sort of an oral drench every four weeks. Um, now the reason for that four weeks, um, so the time it takes for the egg, for when the larvae gets eaten by the animal, to when it, that larvae is in adult producing eggs is three weeks. Um, the reason why we wait an extra week before we drench uh, is so that some of those eggs that get laid out on the pasture uh, haven't been exposed to drench. Um, the reason for this means that when we do drench the animals, uh, there's a lot of the time going to be a very small number, sort of 1% of those worms that don't get killed by the drench. Now what we want is for the genes in those worms to be diluted by the genes from the worms that uh, have not been exposed to the drench, um, just as a way to try and slow down uh, the build up of resistance. Um, Now, we've stayed in there using a REST C as your oral drench when treating calves. Um, this would be my first choice of oral drench uh, because basically it's cheap, plus it has two active ingredients, which is really important. Um, in calves especially, you want to avoid using uh, any drench that only has one active ingredient. Uh, the reason for that is vast majority of products on the market that have only one active ingredient um, only have the active ingredient from uh, the mectin family, so that's stuff like Dectamax or Cydectin. Um, now this active ingredient does not kill one type of worm very well, um, so because of that you should avoid using it in animals less than 15 months of age. Um, once calves reach 15 months of age, they develop quite a good immunity against worms, so it's not as important. Uh, but definitely under 15 months, you want to use a drench that um, has two, at least two active groups. Um, and the same rule applies for lambs. So you want to use something that has at least two active, um, active ingredients. Now, it's very important to make sure the dose you use is correct as well. Um, so you want to dose to the weight of the heaviest animal in a group. Um, so that might mean that you have to split your mobs up into smaller groups based on their weight. Uh, the reason for this is it's, um, it's more important to make sure that every animal gets as much as they need. Now that means some animals potentially are going to be getting more than they need, but with most of the drenches, the safety margins are good enough that um, you should be safely be able to give them sort of half dose again on top of what their recommended dose is. Um, so an alternative to the above program of doing drenching every four weeks is you can actually take fecal samples from the animals and bring it into a vet clinic. Uh, now they can um, either test it in the vet clinic or send it off to a lab to be tested and they'll be able to give you an idea of the parasite burden in the animal. Uh, now for sheep, uh, for lambs, sorry, that is a very good measure of how many worms they have internally. Uh, for calves, once they get over about a year of age, uh, it's not very good at all. So the only time I'd use it in calves would be under a year of age. Uh, now in terms of types of drench, um, you can either use an oral drench, which goes in their mouth, uh, you can do a pour on, which you just apply to their back, or you can use an injectable. Uh, now they all work as well as each other. Um, there's significant differences in prices between them, um, which is more related to just how easy they are to use. So the oral drenches, which are the hardest to give, are the cheapest, and the injectables, which are the easiest to give, are the most expensive. Right, now on to one of the other parasites. Uh, so coccidia, so this is what we call a protozoan parasite. So basically what it is, it's a very small cell that basically will go into the intestines, gets eaten from pasture or anything like that. And what it will do is it will invade into the cells of the intestine. 
will basically hijack them and send them into little factories to produce more copies of the protozoan. Once the cell is basically as full as they can get it and they run out of space, uh, they will rupture out of the cell and move on to the next one. So it causes quite significant damage to the intestine, um, which is what causes the clinical signs. Um, now, it often occurs when meal feeding has stopped, and the reason for that is a lot of meals have a product in it called a coccidia stat. Now, this is basically uh, preventative against coccidia, so it um, kills off the coccidia before they can um, burrow into the intestinal cells. So we quite often see it in animals that have been weaned out off on the pasture, normally about two or three weeks after being weaned off. Um, now the signs for coccidia, uh, basically the main signs are straining and diarrhea. So what you'll see is these animals will come into the yards and a lot of them will have their tails raised like they're about to go to the toilet but they won't be actually passing anything. They'll just be standing there looking hunched and uncomfortable, sort of similar to the, the calf in the bottom left corner in that photo. Uh, you'll also see blood potentially in the faeces, uh, sometimes even quite large amounts, just due to the amount of damage that's happening to the intestine. Now those other signs there, um, they're basically related to the diarrhea, so you'll see dehydration, uh, fever, inappetence, weight loss and anemia uh, potentially from the blood loss. Um, now coccidia is not treated by any of the normal drenches. Uh, to treat this, you need to use a product which you have to get from a vet clinic, which is called Baycox. Um, now, it's quite an expensive product, um, so and it's an oral treatment, so you need to be able to get to your carbs to actually put down their throat. Um, so if, if you suspect you have something like this, um, talking to your vet is the best way to deal with it because uh, there's another time where you can bring in a fecal sample and we can send it off to be tested. Now external parasites in cattle, um, so you've got ticks, uh, if you're in a warm area, basically general rule north of T-Rail, but that's changed a little bit with uh, increased warm weather uh, down around the, the east coast and even around Nelson there's some ticks now. Um, so basically ticks like nice warm areas that are also shaded, so it'll quite often be between the legs and in the ears. Um, to treat it, you can use a product called Betacol, which is uh, you pour onto the animal. Um, another option is that there are ear tags called a Python ear tag, which contain um, a ticocide in it, which uh, you basically put into the cow's ear to help prevent ticks. Uh, now lice, they cause, just like with humans, they're very itchy and they basically will cause the animal to rub themselves raw. Uh, initially it will just be hair loss, but they will actually keep rubbing until they break the skin. Um, now treating lice uh, with cattle, because it's what we call a sucking lice, so they actually drink bodily fluids and blood, um, they will actually be killed by uh, drenches that have a mectin family in it. Uh, so that's stuff like Eclipse or Boss Pour On or any of those products. A REST-C will not treat it, so a REST-C will not treat lice, uh, so if you think you have a lice problem, you'll need to use a different drench. Uh, now, cattle can also get mange, uh, which is a similar science to lice, basically, and is treated the same. Now, ringworm, now this can be quite common in young stock, so just like in humans, it's a fungal infection. Uh, you get pretty distinct around the areas of uh, hair loss with it can be slightly raised and reddened. Uh, it spreads quite easily through mobs and will also spread to humans. Uh, the lesions in cattle, normally around the head and the neck, but they can be all over the body. Um, now there's lots of uh, old wife's uh, myths about treatments for ringworm all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Uh, now basically none of them work. You've basically just got to let the infection run its course. Vast majority of the time it's self-limiting, so basically it, it fixes itself after about a month to four months. Um, so it's basically just wait, wait and see. 
Now sheep, uh, they tend to be a bit trickier with the external parasites. So of course, especially around this time of year, we have fly strike. Um, very, very nasty condition. Basically the flies that cause fly strike, they like nice and moist conditions. So those daggy sheep earlier, they'd be a prime candidate because there'll be lots of moisture at the base of all those dags. Uh, so that tends to be where sheep will get uh, fly strike. Uh, they can also strike them along the back line if, if there's been a lot of rain or moist conditions uh, and the wool's quite long. So basically the treatment for if you get fly strike involves clipping the wool away from the affected areas and applying an insecticide to the area to kill the maggots. Uh, so something like Cyrex or Click um, are two products that you can uh, that you be able to get to treat that. Uh, prevention is much better than any treatment. So the prevention basically involves keeping the sheep with quite short wool through this time of year. So that means basically shearing them in around November or even uh, early December. And then what you can do is you can apply an insecticide like Cyrex to the danger areas. And now Cyrex has a label claim for protection against fly strike for 12 weeks. Uh, so as long as you put a nice drenching on there, um, you should they should be protected. Now sheep can get lice as well. Now unfortunately treating lice is more complicated in sheep than it is for cattle uh, because the sheep what we call uh, have what we call biting lice. Now what that means is they chew on the hair fibres which means that the only way to kill them is to basically apply an insecticide directly onto the lice which means that you have to drench the whole animal in the insecticide, so such as Cyrex. So the, the easiest way to do that on a small block is to get a, a cheap pressure, like five litre pressure sprayer and just spray all over the ewe. Um, now lice and sheep is most common sort of after winter because basically they build up in numbers through winter. And it's the same as cattle. You'll see them rub the wool off their bodies and potentially cause damage to the skin. Alrighty, and so other species there. Um, now they all have their own advantages and disadvantages when it comes to worms. Um, now basically with them, the, the best course of action with them because they can be a bit different and because we don't really have products in New Zealand designed specifically for them, uh, for a lot of them the best course of action is actually talk to your vet to get an idea of what specific regime you should do and they'll be able to help you out with the plan. Thank you.